What if I told you there's a hidden game happening every time you send a transaction on the blockchain? A game where traders, bots, and even validators or miners fight to rearrange transactions in a way that makes them the most money, at your expense. This game is called Maximal Extractable Value, or MEV, and if you've ever wondered why gas fees randomly spike or why your trade doesn't go through as expected, MEV might be the reason. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education, and here we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that anyone can easily understand them. In this video, I'm going to be explaining what MEV is and compare some of the criminal uses and some healthy uses of it. To understand MEV, we first need to talk about how blockchain transactions get processed. When you set a transaction on a proof-of-stake blockchain like Ethereum, whether it's a trade, a swap, or just moving crypto from one wallet to another, it doesn't get added to the blockchain immediately. Instead, it first goes to something called the mempool, short for memory pool, which is like a waiting room where transactions sit before they're picked up by the validator. Validators decide which transactions to include in the next block, and they usually pick the transactions with the highest fees first. But also, since they're in control of the order, they have the power to extract extra profit, and this is the core of MEV. Originally, MEV stood for Minor Extractable Value because in proof-of-work blockchains like Bitcoin or Ethereum before the merge, miners were the ones ordering transactions and extracting value. However, after Ethereum switched to Proof-of-Stake in 2022, the term was updated to Maximal Extractable Value to reflect that it's not just the miners, but also validators and even searchers or bots who can extract value. As you can imagine, some MEV tactics aren't so good for the blockchain because they can cause innocent users like you and I to lose money. There are also a lot of tutorials out there that claim to help you perform MEV attacks on your behalf, but they're actually just scams that steal all of their users' money. So definitely be careful if you're looking for an automated way to perform MEV yourself. On this note, if you can, it's definitely safer to script one yourself or participate in an ecosystem that has a healthy MEV system already set up, and we'll get into some of those later. Having said that, let's take a look at some of the negative MEV strategies. These are especially common in decentralized exchanges because the transactions in the mempool are public. One of the most common MEV strategies is called front-running. Imagine you're at an auction trying to buy a rare collectible, but right before your bid is confirmed, someone at the auction peeks at your bid, offers just a little bit more, and then they win the auction. On the blockchain, bots scan the mempool for big trades or any profitable transaction, even if they don't completely understand how it's profitable. Maybe it's a flash loan or a DEX arbitrage. And then, they simply place their own trade just before yours, stealing a small chunk of your profit. A similar tactic is called backrunning, which works in the opposite way. Instead of cutting in line, a trader waits for a big trade to go through, then immediately places their own trade to take advantage of the price movement. This is especially common if people already hold an asset that they can sell when someone makes a big trade that pushes the price of that asset up. Sometimes, Front-running and back-running are combined into something called a sandwich attack. This is when someone sees a large trade coming, places a buy order just before it, then lets that trade go through, and then places a sell order immediately after it. The person making the original trade gets a worse price because of this, while the attacker makes a profit. Alright, and now we're at the point in the video where we need to explain what slippage is, and it's the main solution for these attacks. Slippage refers to the difference between the expected price of a trade and the actual price you end up getting once a transaction is actually executed. The difference is because transactions before yours in the same block have the ability to change the price of whatever you're buying and selling. In highly volatile markets or in situations where bots are actively exploiting trades, the price of what you're trying to buy or sell can move significantly between the time when you submit your transaction and when the transaction is finalized. This can mean paying much more for it than you planned or receiving far less of it. To protect users against these sudden price movements, especially in the case of a sandwich attack, which temporarily drives up the price of an asset, many decentralized exchanges implement user interfaces and smart contracts that offer a slippage limit. This limit lets you set the maximum percentage of price movement you're willing to tolerate before your trade is automatically cancelled. For instance, if you're only comfortable with a 1% change in price, you can simply set a 1% slippage limit. If the market moves more than that, the transaction won't execute. This feature prevents scenarios like buying a very, 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 very small amount of wrapped Bitcoin for $5 because someone artificially spiked the price with a flash loan right before your swap. 
Moving on, another sophisticated tactic that can fall under MEV involves a single block liquidation attack. In this scenario, a malicious actor can manipulate the price of a token within a single block, often using flash loans to momentarily borrow millions of dollars and buy massive amounts of an asset, which would then trigger automated liquidations and lending protocols that rely on on-chain price feeds. Once the liquidations go through and the attacker profits, they can then sell back their tokens to revert the price back to its normal level, all within the same block, leaving regular users or other protocol participants at a loss. To combat this form of price manipulation, many DeFi projects have started using time-weighted average prices, or TWAPs, instead of just the latest on-chain spot price. A TWAP measures the average price of an asset over a specific period, such as several blocks or even over multiple minutes, making it much harder to manipulate within a single block. By spreading the price calculation over time, sudden spikes or dips in a single block are less influential on the final price used by a protocol, because good arbitragers will return the price back to market value. Speaking of arbitrage, MEV isn't just about sneaky traders. It also includes arbitrage, where bots can scan different exchanges looking for price differences and then simply exploit them for profit. While arbitrage itself isn't inherently malicious, it actually helps balance prices across different exchanges. This type of arbitrage is actually helpful to the average user, but some forms can be harmful to other users. A great example of a malicious arbitrage is when an MEV bot exploits inefficiencies in automated market makers like Uniswap to drain value from traders. We have a whole video explaining AMMs if you want to get into the details, but simply put, an AMM is a type of decentralized exchange that uses algorithms and liquidity pools instead of traditional order books to determine asset prices and perform trades. Now, let's talk a little bit about solutions, because most of the time when you hear about MEV, you're going to hear about the bad types, the kind that harms users. And each blockchain has their own solution to the MEV problem, and some have gotten fairly creative with it. Now, we've already mentioned slippage, and time-weighted average prices are really common solutions that almost every big project implements now. But let's get into some more of the sophisticated solutions. First up is private mempools. One common solution is just to have a private mempool, which is exactly what it sounds like. They keep transactions hidden until they're confirmed, preventing bots from front-running. But this doesn't stop the validators from performing MEV themselves, for better or worse. So what about solutions that exist that limit validators' actions too? Well, next is fair sequencing. Fair sequencing enforces a first-come, first-served model, eliminating the ability to reorder transactions altogether. Instead of letting validators or bots decide the order of transaction based on who pays the most, fair sequencing enforces a more neutral approach, often by processing transactions in the exact order they were received, or by using cryptographic techniques to randomize randomize ordering. A key criticism of fair sequencing is that while it does prevent harmful MEV, it also eliminates beneficial MEV, like arbitrage or liquidation bots that help keep DeFi markets efficient and stable. Another solution is block space auctions, and these aim to make MEV extraction more fair and transparent. So basically, instead of having validators privately manipulating transaction order for profit, these auctions allow traders and bots to openly bid for priority in a structured way. Users can bundle their transactions and submit them directly to validators, reducing the harmful MEV tactics like front-running or sandwich attacks, while still enabling the good form of MEV. But a criticism of block space auctions is that they may still favor the wealthiest participants, as those who can afford to bid the most will always secure priority, potentially reinforcing an unfair advantage in the system. Wrapping this up, at its core, MEV is an unavoidable part of blockchain design because every transaction is visible on the blockchain, but understanding it can help you navigate the space more wisely. And as we have seen, there's not really a single solution that works the best, but different blockchains have different proposed solutions. So when you're deciding what ecosystem you want to use, taking a look at their MEV solutions might help you make a better choice. And if you're just a user of blockchains, you should know there's a ton of really smart developers fighting on your behalf. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you've learned something. And most of all, I hope to see you in our next video.